Um, so to me, I think the, what I, we've heard a couple of remarks about reducing taxes. Uh, I think really this is a time where China needs to be thinking about increasing taxes. The right kinds of tax structures, environmental taxes, land taxes, uh, capital gains taxes, are taxes that actually can help restructure the economy for the 21st century and can help address the problems that I've just addressed, so that I've just noted. So to me, uh, part of the supply side uh, reform is going to require uh, increases in uh, well-designed uh, uh, taxes. So let me begin, though, uh, by mentioning a couple messages that we've had from previous years. Uh, the first is, what matters is not just the GDP numbers, what matters is the quality of growth. And the second is, this has to be approached from both the demand side and from the supply side, keeping the two in balance. It's already been mentioned that this is a particular moment in which there are problems with global aggregate demand. And that's going to be putting a downside pressure on the economy. And so it's import particularly important now as one thinks about supply side reforms that one chooses the right kind of supply side reforms. So a supply side agenda for China needs to begin by thinking about continuing and expanding investments in research and distance research that have been referred to by the minister, education, health, um, including preschool and in rural areas. It, continue, it involves continuing and expanding opportunities for women in Asia to actively participate in the labor force. This is particularly important because an important part of supply side is the labor force. And China's one child policy means that we have reduction in the labor force and that means you have to use the labor force that you have fully. And that means having a kind of labor market which can engage fully and make full opportunity of women and uh, older people. Now, uh, part of the thing, you know, China has uh, a high level of labor force participation of women, but there still seems to be a, a glass ceiling, or not a perfect glass ceiling, but still a problem. A third aspect of supply side is redirecting investment away from real estate. Real estate is an important sector, but, you know, in terms of the long run economic growth, it's uh, manufacturing, it's uh, services, it's, it's the other sectors of the economy, and China has relied too much on, on, on uh, uh, real estate. Uh, um, so, a fourth issue is the environment, and that's absolutely critical for, for China because it goes back to the point I made about the quality of life living standards, health, and the environment in China, as we all know, has faced some very serious problems. China had the worst pollution, air pollution, until India took over that uh, dubious distinction. Uh, but it's still, uh, I, I've been here on red alert days where, where, where really it was told, you were told, dangerous to go outside. And uh, obviously people who are poor uh, are affected uh, most adversely by these environmental. Uh, now this is where uh, there are some uh, imp instruments that are available. A carbon tax uh, is important. Uh, addressing environment will have to require a comprehensive change, change in the nature of cities, but includes good public transportation systems. Um, and this is an example of an interaction between demand and supply because while the carbon tax will induce a change in the structure of production, will have supply side effects, it will also have demand effects because retrofitting the economy to create a green economy will actually create an enormous amount of demand. 